bring back some memories for the old fella. Certainly will. He played 125 games, was an integral member of Richmond's Premiership sides in 1967, 69 and 74. And in 1977 went on to coach Richmond. Please welcome Barry Richardson. Now, Bones, you had one of the classic running styles known to league football, mate. You look like a, a castrated calf running outside the uh, football ground, didn't you, really? Well, yeah, once upon a time, Alf Brand reckoned I ran like a ruptured camel. And uh, Lee Richards said I ran like a giraffe with rubber legs. Is that so. <laughs> Now, of course, this is a light-hearted show, and I wouldn't ask you anything that's going to embarrass you. So why did you shaft Tommy Hafey when you got the job at Richmond? <laughs> I mean, it was probably time, wasn't it? I mean, just I've, yeah. been, I've been reserves coach, and reserves coach have meant to shaft yeah. senior coaches. So and it's who, part, of the, uh, part of the deal. Who gave you the news bones that Tony Jewell would replace you? Um, Octa Wilson and my good friend Gareth Andrews, actually. Gareth, uh, fantastic was... kick of a football, and, and uh, with Doug Farrant, they just were classical kicks of the footy, weren't they? But they could do something that not a lot of people could get, it was kick the footy, is that right? Yeah, and get it. Exactly. And get it. And I, I think we used to have the coterie in the rooms in the 1970s, and I think a bloke came up to me and said, Rex, at half time, I think I'd kicked about seven behind us. I mean, you know, the first thing to do when you kick a goal, and I think you said, yeah, you idiot, get the ball, he's POQ. <laughs> and it was as simple as that, and that's very, very good. You're with the Victorian Abbotters now. You're getting a kick helping the kids along who really love their footy. I spoke to them early along and they play for the love of the game. Yeah, fantastic, Rex, I've got to say. The, uh, the Amateur Football Association to me is uh, almost seeming like reborn in football in many ways. I think it's very much like probably what we were like in the 60s where it was uh, semi-professional only. Yep. Uh, but these guys approach their football a, for the love of it, but they also approach it, certainly at this level, state level, very professionally as well. So it's, it's just been terrific. You played in three premierships in your 128 games at the highest level. You coached at the highest level and you've been a club director and an administrator. You've been right through it. Tell us the circumstances that saw Sean White and Jimmy Steins come to Melbourne. A and B, can it ever, ever happen again? Well, I, uh, that, that was a, uh, an idea the Melbourne Football Club had at the, had at the time through Brassie's idea, and I was chairman of selectors, so I was sent across to sort of do that. And yes, Sean White and Jimmy Steins in particular were just outstanding athletes, as they've proved to be here. I think, unfortunately, immigration is going is, to is put a kiwash in the whole thing, because these days, to bring a young Irish player over is probably going to cost something like $16,000 if they're a student. Yeah and then immigration laws are very, very tough. So as a result of that, unless the AFL does something about it or creates some pull, I unfortunately think that that experiment, as it was called, will probably finish. Great shame. I think they were, they were great ambassadors for their country and also good for the game. Bones, you're a great fella. You're a physiotherapist. Can you explain in layman's terms to our people these horrendous injuries that people are getting, they're coming back and playing? Uh, I think you'll find that probably Dean Rice will have the same knee reconstructed mm. twice and there was someone else who was mentioned yesterday who's already had that done. How does it happen when it would have wiped a player like you out and did? Well, I, I, I mean, Sean White's an interesting one. He's also, he's had two reconstructions, for example, and uh, Dean Rice, as you say, will have one. Oh, look, it's just the advent of surgery, I think. Back in the 60s, if you did a knee, well, unfortunately, what would happen, you'd sort of fade into the sunset and probably never be heard of again. Yeah. But uh, these days, with just the advent of modern surgery and uh, reconstructive surgery, the, the surgeons yeah. are very clever and well, they're coming back. You and I were lucky we went to Richmond in their golden era and they can never take those flags away from no, us, can they? Fun, wasn't You're it? looking yeah. younger than ever, I'm looking older than ever. But it brings back a lot of great memories. Please thank Barry Richardson and we've got a nice prize for you, babe. <laughs> It's the yibbity yibbity beanie, and when you're not uh, treating your patience, you've got the great football card. There's the yibbity. Come what a long way, eh, Coco? Extraordinary beanie. Eh? Come a long way. Hey, eh? come a long way. I remember when yeah, I first son. went to Geelong and Graham said, that idiot, and then I drove up Punt Road with a new fair lane and a boat on the back. He said, he's not an idiot. <laughs> back with more shortly. I'm Rex Hunt, and you're not.